Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer joins me now. There is so much I want to talk about. I'm so grateful that you're here, but you know we have to start with this prisoner swap. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts tonight? Uh, look, the administration did a great job. Evan Gershowitz what, a, Gershowitz, what a fine person. I worked actually in a very bipartisan way with Mitch McConnell to try and put pressure on the Russians to get him out. But the administration did a great job. Whalen, he was just, you know, a Marine. He, he went to a wedding and they just arrested him. And they did a very good job because the number of people on our side who got out was far exceeded the number of theirs, and a lot of them were just uh, political dissidents. Some were friends of Navalny and others. To get those out was a big deal. This is a good thing, and I'll tell you what it does, Stephanie. It says to the other Americans who are imprisoned in authoritarian countries, we're never going to forget you. We're going to keep working till we get you out, too. And it gives them some hope, and that's a good thing, too. When you talk bipartisanship, it gives all of us hope. But I'm going to talk about someone who's not into bipartisanship, <laughs> and that is those. Donald Trump. He yeah. is making this race <laughs> about gender. He is making it about identity. And just yesterday, he referred to you, yes. <laughs> the highest ranking Jewish American member of our government ever, highest ever, ranking Jewish okay, ever. as a proud member of Hamas. Yeah, I mean, the I want to get your reaction, but also, what do you do with that? Because that makes its way through right-wing media sources. Yeah, but everything, all different things make their way through right-wing media. Look, it's ridiculous. The lower Donald Trump gets in the polls, the more unhinged he is. He's unhinged right now. He's scared. You know, a leading Republican senator said to me in the gym this morning, uh, not in the gym, in one of the rooms we were in, he said, we're going to lose because of this guy. Would you like to tell us who, what Republican senator I would that not was? Like I was to just tell checking. You I'm just checking. Was, but good try. <laughs> um, but look, Kamala Harris is scaring him. He's even afraid to debate her. She is proven. She has a great record with Biden. She has practiced. She's been a super prosecutor and did a great job when she was in the Senate. And she's primed. Stephanie, I have never in a long time seen such enthusiasm for her candidacy from every part of the Democratic Party, from the most liberal to the most conservative. You're hearing independents talk about her favorably. Uh, this is great. And she is going to go on and win. Then are, is there any second guessing of why didn't you nominate her sooner, whether it's Kamala Harris 18 months ago or the six, eight people we've been talking about in the last two weeks to potentially be her, her VP, her running mate. It's like the Democratic Avengers, this unbelievable Look, next generation, I don't buy some that. of whom we never even heard their names Look, before. We nominated Joe Biden and he did his he did his job in two ways. He beat Donald Trump, but he had one of the most amazing four year or three and a half years now in Congress that we've ever had. I know I worked with him on all those bills. Look, we passed so much more than in 30 years. We passed the IRA, which reduced the cost of prescription drugs. Insulin's now $35 and did more to help us fight global warming than anything else. He passed, the, together we passed the Chips and Science Act. It brought jobs back to America. We're making chips in America. Thousands and thousands of good paying jobs. We beat the NRA for the first time and said young people can't um, have assault weapons. The veterans, veterans who were overseas and were exposed to these burn pits so that their lungs got all kinds of cancers and stuff, the VA wouldn't pay for them. We changed that. So he, Joe Biden has done a great job and he was a very good candidate. He, look, He's a patriot. He knew that Donald Trump winning would be a disaster. And as always, he did the right thing for America. But he had a great four years, and nothing's going to, three and a half now, it'll go four, it'll be also very good. Uh, nothing's going to take it away from him. Nothing. It has been two weeks since he decided to end his reelection campaign. You are very close to him. You were very close to him during those last few days, making that decision. I know you met with him. What was that like? Well, look, I'm, it was a, we had a heartfelt conversation. We had a caring and almost loving conversation because we are so close. Um, I did tell him I thought he had to hear the views of so many in my caucus. But it was it was a it was a good conversation. I don't want to get into any specific details. You're welcome to. If you I know, to. I know. One day, maybe, <laughs> but not tonight. Uh, but he he it was a it was a conversation that I knew that he would do the right thing for America. And he did. And he's walking away from this with his head up high, tall, because he's had a great, great presidency, and now he's doing the right thing and putting, you know, he decided that Kamala would be the best successor quickly. 
it was an open process. Anyone could have run. Hakeem and I, Hakeem Jeffries, you know, the leader of the House, we decided, she asked us. Kamala called me about 20 minutes after the president called me and said he wasn't running. And she said, I want an open convention. I don't need... She said it. She. She said, I don't want people twisting arms. So I didn't call a single senator, but within the first day, there was such enthusiasm that about 40 of my 51 senators endorsed her. Same so thing happened in the House. She's walking forward, and Donald Trump is walking away from Project 2025, yes. right? This 900-page yes. manifesto that was put together by the Heritage Foundation and some members of the Heritage Foundation who were part of the Trump administration who and would be, be again. Than, would be again. Anyone uh, who thinks they won't enact this stuff is smoking something. So how do you, Donald Trump is now disassociating himself, saying Project Who, how do you keep it in focus okay. and help voters understand if this, if he wins, this thing will be back, and here's how it will impact your lives. I think it's very important, our senators are all doing this, to look at how it affects things locally, okay? So they want to slash veterans' benefits and money for veterans' hospitals. We only have one veterans' hospital on Long Island, three million people, lots of them veterans, and Northport is the hospital. It gives good health care. I've helped get it funding. I've helped get them an HVAC system that they needed. Um, but if that hospital closed, our veterans would be out. Yet you read on page 800-something, they're going to close a lot of these hospitals just because they're going to slash the money. So I think localizing it is important. Today I got on the floor of the Senate, held up a picture of Northport and said, we cannot let this close. I will not let this close. But that's what they want to do in 2025. Last week, we had, you know, you read about those tornadoes for the first time in Utica, New York, my dad's hometown, Rome, New York. Guess what they want to eliminate? They want to get rid of the weather service. They want to privatize the whole weather service. That's right in there in uh, Project 2025. So I went up there and I said, can you imagine if there was no warning system with all the weather changing? We never had 20 tornadoes in a day in New York State just about ever. And so looking at the specifics and taking specifics and then localizing them to how it affects your community, I think will be very devastating. If you just say, oh, it's going to cut a whole lot of things, no one's going to pay much attention. Let's talk about something else you've introduced, the King's Act. That no will King's end, Act. No, no King's, King's Act. Act. That will end presidential immunity if, in fact, a president were to have committed a crime. This seems like a great idea. Yeah, it is. Look, Here's the issue. This is, go ahead. Is it too late? No, well, no, because um, we want to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. This, it's not too late because the court just made this awful ruling that said, if the president does something official, he can't be held accountable, and he more or less can define what's official. You know, Nixon, right before Watergate, said, if the president does it, it's legal. That's utter bull. That's not what the Founding Fathers said, and it's not in the Constitution. But we call this the No Kings Act because Americans, from George Washington all on to the future, we don't want a king. We want a president who is part of, who is uh, 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 limited by the rule of law. This was the most awful ruling by this court. So the Nose Kings Act, I have 38 Democratic sponsors, repeals it. Some people say you need a constitutional amendment to repeal it. You don't. The actual, you know, uh, Judge um, Alito said, Congress can't regulate the courts at all. Bull. You read the Constitution, the plain language is in ways we can regulate the courts, and this is one. This but is that would pass. require Congress working together and passing something, sir. Well, I would hope that our Republican friends would see something as egregious as this that says when any president, Democrat, Republican, I don't care what they are, um, uh, breaks the law, that they can't get immunity. And I'm hopeful that this had got a lot of sponsors right away. And look, our Republican colleagues, uh, sometimes they <laughs> are under the sway of Donald Trump. But I think they're learning very quickly, given what's happened the last few days, <laughs> that he is not their best leader. And just as that gentleman said to me, that senator said to me this morning. Whose name is? Mr. X. Mm. Um, uh, that uh, he's not the person to follow. If this Mr. Macho is scared, but then it, it really, you know what? Let me just Kamala make this Harris. point. Yeah. That Mr. X, who said yeah. to you he's yeah. not the person yeah. to follow, don't you have a hard time looking him in the eye? That person's an elected official who holds public office, Look. who will tell you privately in the gym, God, that guy sucks, Stephanie, but he certainly won't say it in public. I have been surprised by how many Republicans privately, when they talk to one another and talk to us, know how bad Donald Trump is. But they're afraid of him. He's Privately a means they go nothing when you him. hold public office. Okay. Before we go, let me tell you one thing. Yes. When he loses, and he's going to lose badly, in my opinion, 
then maybe we'll get a Republican Party. It'll be conservative, but it won't be the kind of party that's following Trump. One of the things that will help him lose is Kamala Harris, VP Harris, choosing the right running mate. Who do you want it to be? I have faith she will choose the right candidate. Come on, nothing? I have, I have faith she will choose the right candidate.